Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at CameronMCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to show you how to fix the no valid crumb error you get when you try and configure a GitHub webhook with Jenkins. Here's the quick answer. You're probably using the remote URL when you should be using the GitHub plugin. I'm seeing lots of DevOps professionals getting this error 403, no valid crumb was included in the request error when they try and configure a GitHub webhook to interact with their Jenkins server. Now it's an easy mistake to make. Jenkins provides this ability to configure a build trigger. All I have to do is get the Jenkins URL, provide a, a token, and that'll actually trigger the build. You can actually see that I've got a build here with four builds on it. There's the remote trigger URL. If I click return just in the browser, you notice that very quickly, do a little refresh over here, you can see that, that actually triggered a new build. So you would think all of this works, but this is not how you do it. If you actually want to get GitHub to trigger a Jenkins build, you do not use the trigger builds remotely option. That will not work. What you have to use is this GitHub hook trigger for Git SCM polling. That comes with the GitHub plugin, which you will need in Jenkins. And then you have to use a different URL here in order to get the two to work together. So stick around. That's what I'm going to show you how to do next. That is configure this Jenkins GitHub plugin and be able to use a GitHub webhook and avoid this annoying 403 no valid crumb was included in the request Jenkins GitHub error. Here is my GitHub repository, and anytime a change is made to one of these files, I want a Jenkins build job to run. So how do you do that? Well, you need to configure a web hook in GitHub, but you also have to have a project over in Jenkins that will actually run. So right now I'm going to go over to Jenkins. I'm going to create a new item, and I'm going to call it the Jenkins GitHub web hook example. And it'll just be a freestyle project. I'll click OK. And of course, if you want GitHub to build a Jenkins project, there has to be a Jenkins project that uses a GitHub repository, and specifically the GitHub repository that has the webhook configured. So I'm going to create a webhook for this rock, paper, scissors repository, which means I need to have a Jenkins build job that uses this GitHub rock, paper, scissors repository URL. And so I'll come over here to source code management, click git in this Jenkins build job and paste that GitHub URL right in there. So I guess that is step one. Step number two would actually be configuring this job to be triggered by GitHub to have it be triggered remotely. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of hitting trigger build remotely. Do not do that. That will not work. What you have to do is you have to click on this GitHub hook trigger option. That's the one that does it. Click apply, click save, click save, click apply, and you'll now have this job triggered remotely by Jenkins. So I'll click save here. Life is good. Now, what else do I need to do? Well, I need to actually go over to GitHub and have GitHub configure a webhook for this repository. There's one thing I need to do over here in Jenkins, though. I actually have to set up a credential in Jenkins that GitHub Actions can use so that the two can work together securely. So you have to click on the user and click configure. Some people think you go to credentials, but you don't because it's actually an API token that you need. You have to click on this button that says add new token, generate a default token, copy that great big long hexadecimal token. You can just click on this copy button here and now you are ready to head over to GitHub and configure your GitHub web hook. So here I am over in my repository. I click on settings. There's this beautiful button here that says web hooks. It says, do you want to add a web hook? And it's like, well, I wouldn't be over here if I didn't. It asks what that web hook URL is going to be. The GitHub URL is actually going to be the IP address of your server slash GitHub web hook. Now, I've done this example a couple of times before, so it looks like it remembered that URL. So that was awfully friendly of it. And then finally, you have to put your secret in here. That is that long token that Jenkins created. So now GitHub and Jenkins can work together. The other thing too is that has to be a publicly accessible IP address. It's the server, the Jenkins server can't be invisible. 
As far as this Git web hook goes, some people are like, well, hey, where did you come up with that? I didn't make it up. If you actually go over into Jenkins, click on the good old Jenkins head, click manage Jenkins, and then oh, looks like uh, my Bitnami image has a couple of updates it needs. I click on configure systems, and under configure systems, you'll have a GitHub option. This comes if you've installed the GitHub plugin. There it is right there. Now you can add servers. I don't need to do that, but there is a, a curious little question mark here. And if you click on it, it says, look, if you want to set up a GitHub webhook, this is the URL to use. And so that's the URL that I'm using. Okay, I've configured the webhook. Um, you can configure how content is passed back, back and forth. I always like using JSON. How do you want this to be triggered? Every time something happens, just the push event. The push event is just good for me. I'm gonna hammer this green add web hook button and I think everything's done. There's the web hook right there. I don't know, sometimes right when you create this, sometimes it seems to go off. I'm actually just gonna change a file. There's a pipeline there, a good old Jenkins pipeline. I'm gonna make a minor change. I just put a space in there. So it's really not much of a change at all, but I'm gonna commit those changes and that triggers a push. And that happens at about 7.32 on my machine. Let's go over to Jenkins. Jenkins is running on a server somewhere, so I'm not sure exactly what its time will be, but I'm gonna to come to the dashboard. I'm gonna look at my Jenkins build job and oh my, 7.32, 12.32 a.m. somewhere, this Jenkins build job ran. And let's go over here again. Let's see if that wasn't just a fluke. Maybe something happened and I didn't know about it. I'm gonna do this one more time and I'm gonna call it testing the GitHub Jenkins webhook. Click commit changes, pause for a few minutes. I have a feeling, there we go, pending, that is running. Now, by the way, if you have some problems, you go over to your web hooks, you can click on your web hook, you come down here, it usually shows you a list of all the times that the web hook was created, and there you go, I think that web hook ran actually the very first time I created it. If you actually open that up, you can actually see some of the guts of it, and there's, oh, there's that, that handsome JSON right in there that's getting passed and forth. Also, you get to take a, a look at the response here. I love that 200 error code, but uh, if you get a 403 or some sort of error about the crumb not being recognized, well, that information will be set here. By the way, if you do get that message about the crumb be not being recognized, I can tell you what you did wrong. Um, you just asked for the build to be handled with a remote trigger, and you can't do that. If uh, anybody tries to click this button and get it to work with GitHub, Man, you're not doing Jenkins and GitHub webhooks properly. And there you go. That's how easy it is to configure a GitHub webhook to call Jenkins. And there you go. That's how easy it is to fix the no valid crumb error you get when you try and work with GitHub and Jenkins and configure a GitHub webhook trigger. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. Got lots of great tutorials on Jenkins, GitHub, DevOps, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.